Hello viewers, Alan here, welcome to my workshop. Um, well, now I've had the pleasure of seeing that my Webster engine actually runs, runs quite sweetly actually. Uh, I want to um, do the rest of the work and get it all cleaned up. So I have to make a wooden box or a stand for it. Uh, I've got to mount the fuel tank and uh, tidy up some electrics, and put a start stop switch etc. And uh, better get started and so I can get this project wrapped up. So after I started building the wooden base for this engine, and uh, you can see it in the background there in under construction, I decided that I'd like to put a battery in it. I uh, didn't originally envisage doing that, I was just going to rely on the external battery charger to run the ignition coil. But anyway, um, I sourced a battery from a local uh, electronics uh, parts store. It's a, what do you call them, um, sealed lead acid battery seemed a, a good shape and size to fit inside my uh, partially constructed box. So then I needed um, a way of mounting it in the box and I decided I wanted to sit it in a, a channel or a, some sort of a battery tray. And I had this uh, um, fencing rail left over from another project. It's quite a thin wall rectangular hollow section tube. So I grabbed hold of a piece of that and um, peeled out one side and it was interesting to see how much uh, stress was locked up in the material through the tube forming uh, process. But anyway, so I finished up with a, um, a U-section channel, which the battery sits in quite nicely. So that's all good. And the idea now is to um, bend the sides up and then put a, a mounting tab on, on each end. So I've marked it out, I don't know how well that will show up, and drilled holes here. So I'm going to cut these V notches out uh, so I can bend the ends up and then cut this off and so I can bend the end over and get a, a tab to uh, use to mount this. Okay, so I want to remove a couple of pieces off the end here. And I've got pretty much the same setup that I used for stripping out that side earlier on, which is used to use an end mill to cut the corner out. In this case also I've um, um, put holes in at uh, critical points so the cuts have got uh, something to run out into. Uh, it just occurred to me, what's this thing going to do when it breaks free? Um, yeah. Okay, well this bit of tape might help hold things in place, I'm not sure, but I've upped the PPE, I've got a face shield on now, and I'm wearing a heavy jacket, but I've also got this bit of plastic which I've uh, put between me and the job. Uh, let's see what happens. Alright, well I think we're... yep. Well, always better to be safe than sorry. Um, something else that worked in my favour, I didn't uh, complete, deliberately didn't completely cut through the hacksaw cut, so that was a little nib holding it in place as well. And that was probably enough combined with the tape to get the job done uh, reasonably safely. Alright, so there's nothing there that won't clean up easily with a little bit of filing. Alright, so I've got my cutouts done and uh, I've got to put one bend this way and then bend a tab back that way and uh, I've ummed and ahed about which is the best bends to do first and I can argue it either way but I'm going to do it this way and uh, we'll see how we go so hopefully one 90 degree bend coming up so I can see what I'm doing. I guess I can do it from that side. I expect I'll have to go over. That's going to work out alright. The uh, plan is to put a, a spot of weld just there when I've got this set at 90. For people who haven't done this sort of thing before I might just explain the setup briefly. I've got a metal block inside this channel which is pretty much full width 
and that's the uh, edge against which the bend will be formed. So that's square or on the line that where I want the bend. The notch is to make sure there's room for the bend to actually happen. You you can't uh, you've got to leave a bit of space in the root of the bend. And lastly, this backing piece is so that when I pull this over, the it doesn't bulge out on the back. And without a backing piece, that's exactly what it would do. It would bulge out on the back. So that's it in a nutshell. Okay, so I finished the battery tray, welded it on the corners, uh, splashed some paint on it, and drilled some mounting holes. So that's all pretty good. Battery fits in there, snug as you like. Um, it doesn't even fall out upside down, but anyway, it's just a, a lovely snug fit in there. So a consequence of my decision very late in the project to put a battery uh, in the box. Um, I had already drilled and tapped a pair of holes for mounting the coil underneath the, the base plate, but I needed a bit more room for the bits and pieces, and so the easiest solution was actually to rotate the coil a little bit instead of having it in line, just to have it slightly askew. And you'll see when it's all put together how that works out. Anyway, so I've got it set uh, on some parallels and over here is um, an adjustable parallel. So I set it on here first and then adjusted that to get it level. So I'm going to drill a new hole, a 6.8 diameter, 17 64ths, which I could be able to tap for uh, M8. That's given me a nice securing point for the, uh, the coil, there and there. I might just do a slight chamfer on the top of the hole actually. Okay, as you see, um, I've got all of the pieces uh, in, installed in the underneath of the box now. So just the basic layout. You saw me re-drill this hole here so I could turn the coil at an angle. That created the space, more space for the electrical components and also a more direct route for the lead to the spark plug uh, exit. Explaining the wiring a little bit, I've got a, an illuminated toggle switch down here. So there's a battery uh, connection to the battery positive here and that's the switched terminal going out to the uh, coil so that's live when it's turned on um, the, um, the the light in the switch needs its own earth so that's what this is for so just a quick word on this uh, bracket so um, battery needs a fuse and uh, there's nothing between the way I've wired it there's nothing between the fuse and the battery the switch and everything else are um, uh, downstream of the fuse. Um, the charging port has a couple of functions. Obviously it connects incoming positive and negative to the battery to charge and the positive goes through the fuse. But the, the negative is actually switched. When this guy is plugged in, the charging plug, it actually isolates the battery and, and negative from the equipment. So the battery is completely isolated when, in, when it's in charging and there's no power over this side at all. So a couple of notes on how I made the box. I haven't got any video of this. I made it out of some uh, uh, Maranti, Philippines mahogany, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's 12 thick um, and there's just four pieces mitered on the corners to make the frame and then one piece let in there and the uh, obviously the the engine base plate just sits in that hole and it's quite a nice fit in that hole well that's all the good news the bad news is the way I've messed up uh, varnishing it you can see there's all sorts of uh, runs and issues and missed bits and yeah it's not very good at all so I'm umming and ahhing a bit about uh, what to do with that I think I have to try and rub it down and start again basically what and you can see is lots of runs on the inside here too what went wrong is that I had it sitting on the bench on a couple of uh, things like that which in hindsight was really dopey because um, I couldn't see what I was doing around the back that's where this uh, mist bit came in and also the box isn't heavy enough to resist the movement of the brush with the stickiness of the varnish so it was moving around a bit and the last thing I did wrong was to use the wrong brush uh, I thought I'll use a disposable brush because it was just coat one and I was planning on two coats but the the, the brush was completely inappropriate. Anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't look too bad at a quick glance, but it's not very good at all. So I think what I'm going to do 
Um, I've, I've got to allow plenty of time for this stuff to properly harden off. I'm going to try to rub it down and see if I can improve on it. I don't really see how I can make it worse. Right, well I've been through a few cycles now of uh, rub down and revarnish this thing and um, I've made some progress I guess. Uh, I've still got a couple of areas that I'm happy, not happy with but the breakthrough was making a temporary handle which uh, I fit, fitted to the uh, battery bracket mounting points. I'm not holding that very well for you. I think that's probably... anyway. Um, and I've been rubbing it down between coats using this uh, paper which is pretty good I don't know what exactly what it is, it's 240 grit anyway but uh, whatever this pink colour is it does seem to work fairly well uh, flattening varnish down without clogging up um, but I've... Uh, this because of time of drying between coats and so on and the, the original making the box and waiting for glue to dry and whatever, this has been going on for about two weeks and I'm more than a bit over it. So I've got the um, top rubbed down again. I'm thinking that's going to be the uh, the final rub down and whatever I get from this, that's it. <laughs> Move on. If I do another one of these things, um, I'll... Um, which what, what I did was to use um, a sealer which is the correct thing to do and then you can rub that down but then I've been using this stuff which is a two-in-one product it's um, stain and varnish uh, and I should have known better anything which tries to do two jobs doesn't usually do either of them particularly well I really, if I'm doing another one, it's going to be the sealer, rub that down, a stain, and then as, as many layers of varnish as I can be bothered to apply. I thought that the two-in-one thing would save me time, but no, I don't think so. Anyway, if you've watched any of my earlier videos, you'll know that painting isn't my thing. I, I do not like it. The, the joinery side of this worked out all right. I think you can see here the uh, pieces fitted together pretty well. And... Uh, Anyway, it's going to get one more coat on top, that's going to be it, and then I'll do the final assembly and we'll bring you back at that point. Okay, so we have a look at it running off its uh, self-contained electrics from the battery, onboard battery, charging the coil. I did actually play around with the inlet valve spring a little bit too, try to make that a bit weaker. Anyway, let's see how this goes. It actually runs surprisingly smoothly, I have to say. There really isn't a surprisingly little vibration. I don't know what I can do to, to illustrate that. Perhaps if I stand that there we'll get some idea. Well, I'd say that's pretty good. 
Anyway, enough of all that. Uh, clearly it works. Okay, well the varnishing didn't turn out as well as I would have hoped, but um, well, that's the way it is. A uh, person can only do what he can do. I'm uh, quite pleased with the engine overall. It certainly runs nicely and it was the engineering and machining side of it that was of most interest to me. But the end result's quite pleasing on the eye anyway. Um, now, I don't have any bloopers to include at the end of this, but I do have uh, a photo which uh, I'll show you here, which includes or, or, or shows a number of the pieces which I messed up in, uh, in, in the project and had to make a remake. So there's a piston with a hole in it, uh, a valve activating lever that's uh, off to one side, etc. Uh, I don't know how other people fare with these sorts of projects, but it seems that I can't get through them without making lots of mistakes. But uh, overall, it was uh, quite a lot of fun. And I've just included one other photo, which is um, uh, the various jigs and, or some of the, the various jigs and fixtures that I made uh, to help along the way. Uh, I was really surprised at how much time went into this, I have to say. But they were enjoyable times, uh, lots of interesting problems to solve, and perhaps some skills acquired along the way, certainly some good experience. Anyway, if you followed along, followed along from the start, thanks very much for your support and uh, I'm already thinking about my next project, which uh, may well be another engine. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching and cheers.